Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Well, guys, this, this is going to be our fourth video today, though we're going to release this tomorrow to give you guys a little time to digest. You might be familiar with this. On June 18th, CERN unveiled an unusual new landmark, a two-meter tall statue of the Hindu deity Lord Shiva. Now, this is in the Nataraj state where he is the actual turner of the wheel of the entire mechanism of the universe. Why do they have a Shiva at CERN? Again, many people said, well, it's because he's destroyer destruction. Uh, a lot of people that don't have a clue about anything as far as comparative religion or mythology said, well, you know, he's a demon. Well, he's actually a deva, um, you know, and, you know, again, that whole thing. It's just showing their ignorance. Did you know, this is yesterday's EE Arts video. Oh my God, what do you think this means? That the fact that the, the Jewish tradition for mourning uh, a lost loved one is called sitting Shiva, where you literally sit in mourning on a, on a short chair and you take condolence calls from those people that want to pay you their respects. Sitting Shiva, exactly like the name of the deity, who is often thought of as the god of death and destruction, not to be confused with Yama, who is the actual lord of the dead, so to speak. But Shiva is also about rebirth and renewal. There, It doesn't just stop there. Do you guys know of Jos Josephus? Josephus is perhaps one of the most well-known historians of the ancient Roman world. And Flavius Josephus, uh, we rely a lot on the works of jo Josephus. We have this book. Um, it's absolutely tiny print. I would recommend that you get a, a volume that has bigger print because you're going to need a magnifying glass, and it's very, very thick. Uh, again, the, the amount of entries that's in here dwarfs uh, the Bible, per se, and it gives us detailed, firsthand accounts of a lot of things that happened back in the ancient days that we all talk about. Flavius Josephus was a first century Jewish historian and apologist of priestly and royal ancestry who survived and recorded the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and later settled in Rome. I kid you not, this is you know, one of the key figures in, in history, especially Roman Jewish history, best known for his writing the Jewish War. He was born in Jerusalem, then part of the Roman province of Judea, to a father of priestly descent and a mother who claimed royal ancestry. Now again, of course, obviously, he, he sounds like he's an insider, but again, look at everything that's out there and weigh it with what you feel. Weigh it with what you feel, because so many of the accounts of our history really do come from him. A ton of them come from him. And <laughs> this is another just fun coincidence. In his history of the Jews, a Jewish scholar, theologian, Flavius Josephus, he lived from 37 AD to 100 AD. He wrote that the Greek philosopher Aristotle had said, that these Jews are derived from the Indian philosophers. They are called by the name by the Indians called Kalani. Uh, Cler Clercus of Soli wrote, the Jews descend from the philosophers of India. The philosophers are called in India Kalanians, and in Syria, Jews. The name of their capital is very difficult to pronounce. It is called Jerusalem. And then you have Megasthenes, who was sent to India by uh, Seleucus Nicator about 300 years before Christ, and whose account from new inquiries are every day acquiring additional credit, says that the Jews were an Indian tribe or sect called the Kalani. Interesting, is it not? You have Martin Hogg, Ph.D., wrote in the Sacred Language, Writings and Religions of the Par Parsis, the Magi are said to have called their religion Kesh e Ibrahim, or Ibrahim. They trace their religious books back to Abraham, who was brought to have believed them from heaven. There are certain striking similarities between the Hindu god Brahma and his consort Sarasvati and the Jewish Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> A lot more than just mere coincidence. Although in all of India, 
there's only one temple dedicated to Brahma. It's interesting, too, because, again, as we were saying before, uh, Brahma is not <laughs> worshipped or paid homage uh, like, say, Shiva or Shakti, the divine feminine in its many forms, and Vishnu as well. I, you know, why? Well, because <laughs> partially because he gives too many boons is really what it is. And a lot of these boons ended up benefiting uh, those that we would call the Asuras, who, in my mind, you would definitely call the Anunnaki Asuras. This is part of, of the bigger picture. As I was saying before, there is nothing original in the Abrahamic tradition. Everything in the Abrahamic tradition comes from older traditions. We can find all the biblical tales in the Sumerian accounts. We find out that Utnapishtim, uh, tale of the flood, predates the Noah tale by thousands of years. And again, all this is part of a history that has been constantly, constantly revised. And that's exactly what the Jewish scribes did. They constantly rewrote and revised. This is just an accepted practice. It is. It is. And it's really not questioned. And, and to us, I think what we try to do here is we try to get people to go to the source on their own because a lot of people will just take everything at face value and they don't kind of go back and figure out well where did this come from because the bible is not an original piece of work it's taken from all kinds of different sources and if you're looking at a picture you're trying to judge a picture you can't judge a picture by just seeing like little patches of paint here and there I mean, how, how can you really make any sense of that? And that's what you get in the Bible. You just get these little blotches of paint. You have to go back and look and see, well, how is that colored in? And how is that painted in? And start getting questions answered for yourself. That's, that's what I did. Absolutely. So again, Abraham and Sarah are taken from the myths, the legends of Brahma and Sarasvati. And again, Brahma and Sarasvati are thought to be, um, you could look at them as the yin and the yang of certain creative energies. Sarasvati is the goddess of wisdom and Brahma is the creator. It's said that Vishnu, when it's time to create a new universe, it literally is Vishnu that does it. But he does it by going into a meditative um, state and Brahma comes out from his umb umbilical cord and creates uh, the universe. Brahma is the actual being that creates the universe. Now, those that have studied Gnosticism might take it that Brahma is kind of like a demiurge. You could definitely look at it that way in some senses if you are familiar with the uh, Gnostic uh, line of thinking. Again, all, everything that we have is a distortion of what was common knowledge in the past. And we look to the, the area of uh, the Hindu people, the, the Indus Valley area, you will find that there are civilizations, there, there are cities that were living very peaceful with no weaponry, no armaments, and we're, we're not using the structure that we have seen upon this planet in thousands of years as far as geopolitical. There was no central authority. None. They were living a very, very different existence, and they were cohabitating peacefully. It was the system that came in and changed all this. And really, you know, the Abrahamic tradition that we now have, which is about two-thirds of the population of the earth, look at reality through the Abrahamic lens, or at least they've been brought up that way. It's a distorted lens because, again, uh, when you look back to the time of Aristotle, we are going back well before the time of, of Christ again. Uh, the real Jesus, you know, again, very, very different than the revised story. And many people don't even realize that the oldest New Testament pieces that we have, the fragments, even are, are coming uh, lifetimes after the person that was the historical Jesus walked the earth. And in fact, these were agreed upon stories that were put into effect about 300 years plus after the real historical Jesus walked the earth. This is all just basically about the control system. It's, it's just plain and clear. So again, you can see this, and this is why we find Abraham and Sarah really being taken from the mythology, the legends, 
uh, of the Hindu tradition with Brahma and Sarasvati. It's just another, did you know? Did you realize this? There's just so many different parallels that can be made if you expand yourself. But, it, it, I mean, if you're not even willing to look, then you're just you're going to say stay stuck and what happened to me was i had this thirst for knowledge and this thirst for truth and this thirst for for spirituality and i couldn't just let it end in the bible i'm like i know there is more and it wasn't until i really opened myself up um, that i discovered what truth is absolutely and again these stories uh are used to explain things in a very very human way as we've gotten from the guides the guides have never said this is how it went down they've always said we hope these stories are beneficial for your understanding because they're just stories and they're um you know they are ways to visualize when we use uh, these different allegories when we're talking about forces of nature yes we're also talking about uh, actual uh, personas and, and beings as well at the same time although you know again thousands of years go by and everything gets kind of blurred so the the power structure that's on the planet wants to intentionally make it as blurry as possible yeah, kind, kind of blurred is an understatement. Absolutely. Look forward to your comments. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Exclusive videos over there every single week. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.